there's a lot you can do in this town You set it up and turn it around We might have come from somewhere else But this is where we found ourselves Welcome to the local show People you work with, people you know Welcome to another edition of The Local Show here on Grassroots Community Network. I'm Eric Scarvin, your host. Thanks for joining us this week, guys. We're working our way through the month of January into the new year. Hope you guys are having a great 2022. Really excited to welcome a first-time guest to the show. He is the Road and Bridge Director for Picking County. I want to welcome first time to The Local Show, Scott Matice. Welcome to the show, Scott. Sharing the couch with Luna, who's back on the set this week. And uh, you're a dog lover yourself. We were talking a little bit before the show. And uh, you've got three kids, two dogs. How many chickens? I think we're at 15 or so now. <laughs> Hard to keep a track couple, of the chickens. Yeah, yeah. A cat. You know, we've got a little everything. And where do you guys live in the valley, Scott? We're up by the frying pan road. Up the pan. There, yeah. God, I love it up there. It's so pretty up there. I could talk the whole show just about the frying pan and root eye because I've been like kind of getting reacquainted with that area the last several years through ice fishing which is so much fun. Nice. Uh, we'll talk about ice, but more on icy roads versus icy root eye. But let's start with your background. Um, you grew up in Durango, Colorado. Um, tell us a little bit about that and how you ended up in Aspen. Yeah, sure. You know, I grew up in Durango, uh, went to high school down there. And, uh, you know, we traveled for sports around the West Slope a little bit in Denver. And I got a kind of decent feel of where I thought I maybe wanted to land. Um, I think what Durango taught me mostly is we're in the middle of nowhere. And so down in Durango, you, you don't go many places. It was either for me and, and my brother and my family, it was either going to the mountains to camp and hike or going out to the desert to play. And uh, nice. I bounced around a little bit, but ultimately when I, I had some friends that moved to, to Aspen okay. and uh, you know, I tried some places, went to school up in the Northeast corner of the state up at UNC and then uh, thought I wanted to be close to my friends in Denver and landed in the Vail Valley for a little bit. And then I had a lot of these friends over here from Durango that landed in this valley going, you should check it out. Uh -huh. Come over here. The skiing's great. Remember how we could go to the desert on the weekends? Man, I'm telling you, Aspen's the place to be. So I started making more and more visits over here. And then, uh, sure enough, landed in, uh, you know, this 12 years now. Did you have a job offer when you came here? Or did you just, you landed in the valley and then started looking around for jobs? Or how did that kind of? So I was teaching skiing. Great question. I was uh, over in Vail teaching skiing over at Beaver Creek and um, met my wife there, both taught skiing and kind of were working our way through that, you know, up the system, if you will, coaching and teaching. And nice. then we kept getting that, hey, come, come to Aspen. I did some trainings over here. <laughs> and I was like, man, you guys are right. It's, you know, for me, it was far enough away from the front range to, to get over here and separate a little bit. And then there, you know, the weekends to get to, out, to, out to the desert. Yeah. Um, what a, and the mountains. I mean, what a great place. The yeah. central location. I really like that too, because you're, not too far from really many things in Colorado. You know, four hours from Moab, a couple hours from Fruta, um, four or five hours from, what is it, five hours to Durango, approximately? I still don't know that number. I mean, I don't know what that number. I'm, I plan on six. <laughs> Some people tell me four, some are like eight. I plan on six. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how people drive, but, you know, I plan on six <laughs> or seven. I still get down there usually like once a year, so my, my brother still lives down there, so. Right. And yeah. how many years now have you been with uh, Pickin County? This is my, I just, 10 years. 10 years. 10 years now. with the county. And then uh, Road and Bridge Director? Correct. For yeah. that whole time? Or, no. I'm, or you, uh, worked out, you worked your way up. You were actually a driver, correct? Yeah. Yep. Came in as just an operator. operator. I worked both nights and, and evenings. I worked both shifts and then uh, shift lead and then into the current, current position now, probably, I think, five years now in the current position. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And what do you like most about it? As an, as an operator, I loved being out at four in the morning, you know, honestly, or, or 10 o'clock at night, being out there and pushing snow, um, growing up skiing powder. I, I love that sensation of fresh powder coming over at the time, my, my head. And, uh, now in a plow truck, it's coming over your plow. You're still getting face shots against the windshield, you know? So, uh, like there's that. something special about that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, plowing snow and it's the instant gratification, you know, you're making a difference. You can, much like mowing the lawn, you're like, yeah, I just did something. Right, right? it's tangible. You see the results absolutely. right there. Absolutely. Right, and and probably that kind of magical time, right? Late, out late, out early. There's not a lot of people around. It's more maybe of an environment kind of nature experience. For sure. I mean, that peaceful oh, experience. Yeah, Is and, that part and of the, it? the 
the the wildlife. Yeah. You know, I miss that now that I'm I'm driving a desk much more often than I <laughs> than I like to get out. Um, the the just the wildlife early in the morning, late at night. You know, the frying pan's a special place. Uh, but all of our routes, you know, I see pictures every day. The guys are like, look what I saw. Check this thing out. Look how the sunset, the sun, you know, the sunrise. Oh man, there's so much cool parts of that. Just and you are you're, you're alone in your truck. Oh, man, just the other day, last week, driving up the pan earlier, I finally got up at, at dawn to get up there when I wanted to to Ice Fish Route. I saw the big horn sheep yeah. first couple of miles up the road, and I hadn't seen them in years, and things like that are just... That's why it's worth getting up early, even though, for me, I really don't enjoy the early. But once I'm up and moving, getting that cup of joe in there, that's pretty cool. we got a lot to get to, Scott. We're going to take a quick break, rehydrate for some heavy talking. <laughs> I do want to thank our winter underwriters for making uh, every week uh, and every guest possible here on the show for our five-month series, starting with Gonzo Nation, Haiti Children, Highlands Ale House, Klug Properties, Obermeyer, Pickin County Landfill, and Sundog Athletics. Go to our only break of the show, guys. We'll be back in less than two minutes with Scott. We're going to learn a lot about what it takes to maintain the roads and bridges in the county and so much more. Don't go away. The Gonzo Foundation is a nonprofit organization created to promote literature, journalism, and political activism through the legacy of Hunter S. Thompson and is a proud supporter of the local show and Grassroots TV. For more information, visit thegonzofoundation.org. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. I'm Klaus Obermeier, and I wish you a terrific winter on the Aspen Mountains. <laughs> Locally owned and located at the base of Aspen Highlands, Highlands Ale House features delicious scratch-made comfort food, cocktails, beer, and more. Their sunny outdoor deck is ski in, ski out. Two miles from Aspen, they're open daily, winter and summer. Sundog Athletics, Aspen's Adventure Sports School, is your opportunity to experience private, all-inclusive snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, and fat biking instructional adventures that will improve your safety, performance, and enjoyment. Welcome to the local show, people you work with. Thanks for sticking with us here on The Local Show, guys. Scott Matice, first-time guest on the show. And, um, Scott, to uh, remind viewers, you are the Road and Bridge Director for Picking County. You have a deep passion for skiing, though. We're going to talk about your job, but I want to go into your skiing because you've got a background, you know, since childhood, right? You learned to ski at a young age. You're a Highlands guy like myself. We yeah. also share that in common. So where do you like to go up at Highlands? Do you like, are you a Highland Bowl guy? Do you like to h hike the bowl? Uh, you know, I, I used to hike there a, a lot more often. And, uh, now I'm just trying to get out with the kids. And, uh, nice. It's, it's fun. My eight-year-old takes me on his kind of secret stashes. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's great. It's all great. It's different motivation now. So the bowl only happens maybe two or three times a year for me. But anywhere, anywhere Highlands, I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we Hard all know our wrong, secret right? spots. I mean, yeah. Lower Mountain, I mean, there, I've been finding more stashes in the Lower Mountain in recent years. Because, you know, you got to come all the way down the mountain from the bowl at some point. <laughs> or 
over on Oli's side. Sometimes I like, there's some sleepy yeah. stuff over there too. That's pretty sweet. I, I no historically sneak and, over to Oli side. Yeah, yeah. My son sneaks on the other side over in Temerity's. You know, we got into Y12 two weekends ago and had some of the best turns I've had in a long time. So, so this is your eight year old son. Eight, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you also have a five year old son that broke his leg. Yeah. I broke his Recently. leg just the Friday, the Friday that break started. No pun intended, but the, for holiday. <laughs> all, ki- all kinds of winter breaking yeah. going on there. Yeah. But he's doing better now. He's good. Out of his cast. Yeah. He's so these getting, guys just charge. They they do. Yeah. yeah, they really do. And, you know, they're products of local ski organizations, so they're doing great. And, right. Uh, I could keep up for, I think, maybe a month, and now they're passing me. <laughs> well, you had some good practice prior to fatherhood. You had been teaching skiing. We had talked briefly about that. Also coaching, synchro skiing. Yeah, which really piqued my interest because we have, what is it, the World Synchro uh, Competition here on Aspen Mountain up at uh, FIS, I think, or or North American Tortolot Park. Yeah, I think exactly. they vary the different areas on Aspen Mountain. But talk a little bit about your uh, coaching of synchro skiing. Yeah, so I, you know, I used to compete um, and travel over Switzerland actually a couple of times, uh, competing in synchro. And who'd have thought that this is a thing? And it <laughs> sure is. And came over here, and they're looking for a coach. And this is before kids signed myself up. Self up, and you know, I'm drawn to that early morning apparently because uh, <laughs> the team goes out there, it's ski school employees, and get on the hill early, first chair lift, and uh, watch that sun come up, and go out and work on skiing. And, oh, um, but really, coaching a group that that you have to trust for one, you know, and on top of, it's not really, you know, it is. It's like the Blue Angels on skis. I mean, <laughs> I it really it. is. Yeah, that's a good comparison. Yeah. Different formations, and you all got to be synced up, obviously. And um, that must have been super. And did you have some success um, in coaching? Yeah. You know, we we, uh, co- we competed here locally in Aspen. Um, I, gosh, that was nine years ago now. Sorry, that, that's been a long wow. time. Wow. But just really, it's a, it's a it's a great celebration. End of the season. It happens is it the at the end divas? of the year. It's it the is. Aspen Divas. Yeah. Okay. And I actually coached the Diva Ets. That was one of the first couple of years of the, the second team there. But uh, just a great celebration of just skiing and, and uh, ski schools, if you will, at the end of the season. Wow. That's yeah. pretty cool. So that sounds like it was a really, overall, really enriching experience. Yeah, I miss it. I see, you know, my friends are still doing it and coaching it. And I'm a little jealous about that experience because it, it's a fan. It's just one of it's a special, it is a special time on the hill. Right, right. Well, also slipping and sliding our cars these days with a epic December, I think. Was it all-time record snowfall in December? If, if it wasn't, that's all. I mean, in my brain it was, for sure. I think sure. it was on the ski areas. I don't know about the roads, but, I mean, that must pr- obviously present some challenges for you guys, you know, keeping the roads maintained and plowed specifically in the wintertime. And can you tell us a little bit about kind of the challenges of this winter with the big snow in December and you know, kind of what you guys do in general out there in the wintertime. Yeah, you know, we, we have a nine-person crew that stayed very busy for uh, 20 days or so, whatever. I wasn't counting. <laughs> but, uh, you know, six six trucks are on the road at most uh, early in the morning, Monday through Friday. They're out at 4 a.m., and then there's an afternoon crew that's out till 10 or 11. Um, you know, we work pretty closely with the sheriff's department. If they need us a little bit longer or earlier, okay. we come in. Um, but... Believe it or not, we prefer those larger storms. So, yes, it presented a lot of days of consistent work and long hours and long shifts. But um, when there's lots of snow, it holds the gravel a little bit better and provides better traction. Okay. Those, you know, those one-inch storms are a little bit annoying to us because they're really slippery. And, uh, you know, they thaw and melt a lot. And we want those We want those big big dumps. We like going in circles and in powder. So Yeah, pl- yeah so you get basically something to hold that rock, kind of that aggregate. Is it... It's like a three-quarter inch rock. We use a three-eighths chip. Three-eighths yeah, chip yeah. rock. So, yeah, it makes sense. It would kind of implant in the snow, whereas ice is a whole different matter. And, <laughs> totally. Uh, ice, ice ain't nice, right, Luna? No, powder. Goes, no, it's hard. We want powder. I'm a powder hound, not an ice hound. <laughs> Luna's talking. She's, she's having a good she's time. Getting, she's getting kind of talkative. I think she really is an aspiring co-host. Yeah, so, I like so she's, it. I like it. She's, she's working on her uh, co-hosting skills. So, um, so yeah, so that big snow was actually not a, necessarily a bad thing. It was a lot of work for you guys. But in terms of traction, it wasn't super sketchy. Uh, no. You know, we prefer those larger snow amounts. And we have large plows, whether it's one inch or one foot, really. 
Our plows can move it. It's a, it goes a little bit slower, but we prefer those larger storms where we can hold aggregate. We don't have to reapply as often. Okay. So we like those large storms, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, what can people do? Like, say, uh, we were talking a little bit of before the show. You're out there. You're driving Highway 82. You're driving some of the county roads. You see a plow. You see them kind of dispersing dispersing the gravel. What, what should people know just kind of in terms of safety and what, what can help you guys out when you're out there working? Sure. You know, in our, our more rural parts of the county, if you're coming at a plow truck on a two-lane road, it's great. If you can just stop, if it's safe to do so, just stop right in the lane okay. and let that truck pass you. Um, you know, if we can lessen, you know, lessen the chance of something happening, give us the room that it takes to get by. Those trucks are big and they're flashing big lights, and I know they're a little bit overwhelming. But if you can, if you have a, a safe spot to pull over and let us pass, that's great. Okay, um, that's good to know. Yeah, eighty two is a little different, a little different animal, and that's that's not a county road; it's a state highway. But um, those drivers prefer you to kind of stick behind them, and you know, oftentimes they're multi, three or four trucks wide. And uh, you know, I remind people a lot that the safest road to drive on is the one right behind the plow truck. Right. You know, that they just remove the snow and there's aggregate down, right? That's that's the freshest, cleanest, most traction road you can ride on. So a little patience can go a long way. Okay. So those are CDOT vehicles then, um, CDOT plows on Highway 82. That's okay. correct, yeah. And then you guys have all, and how many total miles uh, of roadway do you guys maintain? About 150 miles. That's yeah. a lot for like nine people total, six total drivers. That's a lot of workload. And so if good you on you guys, yeah. we appreciate that. Thanks. And, you know, and 150 doesn't sound like a whole lot, but that's that's only one way, right? So each one of our roads, you have to go up one lane, turn around, and come back. So double that. That's 300. Right. Um, I didn't think about that. Yeah, there's two lanes. You right. Deal yeah, with. yeah. Right away. Do both lanes in one <laughs> swoop. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's pretty. What else can people do? Um, you know, in terms of kind of like just a raising awareness with the public, and you know, what else would you like to share with the public, just in terms of kind of like safety and again, um, operating where it's conducive, you know, to, for you guys to do your job. You know, what really makes our plow drivers happy is if, uh, you have, if you are plowing your driveway or someone else is doing it for you, instead of pushing all that snow out into the county road, if you could find a way to keep it on the sides of your driveway, that just offers such a safer drive for us. Um, you know, there's a state statute against it, and we understand that it's a challenge to come out of your driveway and not put that snow, snow on the county road, but, man, it, some of these storms, if you're in a plow truck, you come across a four-foot snow bank in the middle of the road. The challenge is when we're driving in a blizzard, you don't see it. And that snow bank could actually shoot the truck. You don't shoot the truck, but direct it off the road. Now we have a stuck truck. And so at best, we have a stuck truck. At worst, we have someone that's injured. So that would be a number one. If we could keep the snow off the sides of your driveways, that'd be awesome. I see that a lot in um, in the city of Aspen too. Of course, people are just plowing out into the roadways. So when the city plows are coming by, and I imagine you guys have to coordinate quite a bit with the city. How does that kind of work in terms of like coordinating? The know, challenge is that the state ourselves and the city have a little bit different rules, if you will, on some of those driveway things. Yeah. Uh, but definitely, we have road cemetery lane turns into McLean Flats Road, uh, Maroon Creek Road below the arc is a city road, you know, city street. Uh, so we work pretty closely with trying to just communicate early in the season. We all get together. And, you know, if I'm driving and I'm a citizen, I don't know where that county line is. And I don't honestly don't really care. I just want to make sure right. I get to point A to, from A to B safely. Right. Um, you know, but we all kind of feel the same way on, on some of that snow removal stuff. If you could just keep the hazards out of the road for us, that makes it so much easier for us. And I know, mo you know, all these drivers, uh, if you have any questions, just flag them down. They're happy to let you know, like, hey, where, where should I put my snow? You know, and flag them down, and they'll have a great conversation, and you, they can make your life better, and vice versa for us. Do you have a, um, a story you can share? Um, I guess I'd prefer more. I'm sure there's scary stories, but <laughs> like just, I mean, you can imagine hazards on the road and all kinds of things. But is there kind of like a funny story that you might think about? Maybe when you were an operator that you ran into, or an interesting thing that you couldn't believe. Um, some kind of a story. From you know. I'm such a there. wildlife guy. I just love the wildlife stories and pictures. And a mountain lion with a frying pan sticks in my head, you know, oh, one morning, wow. seeing a mountain lion that was big enough that her, I'm going to assume a female, I wasn't close enough to know, but tail was on the yellow line and head was on the white line. Oh, my god! And that was one of those, like, I must be tired. And then, uh, <laughs> like, this can't, it. This can't be this happening. Can't be true, yeah. And then a week later, a guy got a, a quick video of one, and I was like, that has to be the same cat. So, you know, nothing really crazy, weird out of the norm. You know, you, you see people people doing spins in their cars every once in a while and you're like how did yeah. that just happen um 
but for the most part, you know, nothing, nothing crazy out of the ordinary. Let's talk about that a little bit because I just we were talking again before the show, kind of prepping. You know, the crazy driving on eighty two in particular, and and that would obviously carry on to the other you know roadways. And what are some things just again in terms of driving? To me, speed is is kind of the number one thing. I mean, do you have any thoughts on that in terms of how people can get, can drive a little bit safer, especially come winter time? I think speed. You know, county roads and, and the state highway, a lot of times, if you haven't been here very long, and, or if you have, you realize that our roads will, will be down to pavement on one corner, and the next corner is a snowpack and icy. Frying pan example, uh, Highway 82 down in the canyon. If you can just prepare yourself for icy roads, even if they're dry, take, just back off a little bit, slow down, yeah. because you better believe when it gets to freezing, they're going to be slippery. What about... um? What about tires? Because, I mean, I know I'm a guy that I'm going to run my vehicle. I'm running a 20-year-old truck. I'm going to run those tires as long as I can. I mean, do you have any thoughts on that? Because, I mean, that's obviously the contact on the road. Yeah, people. you want good tires. Yeah. You want good tires. And, you know, four-wheel drive is ideal, but it doesn't work for everybody. But you can get a long ways with uh, front-wheel drive and just snow tires. Studs are even yeah. better. But if you just had a good all-four-season or snow tire, uh, you can usually get most places uh, around our county. So even if you're a stud, you still need studs? Is that what you're you, telling me? You might need studs. <laughs> you might, you might need studs. Studs always help, right? Yeah. I mean, when you hit the ice especially, digging in a little bit more. For sure. And I just saw the, the VMS board, the variable message sign at the corner of the S-curves here that the city put out on the four-wheel drive doesn't mean four-wheel stop. Right. And that goes back to what we were talking about with speed, too. You know, just slow down and I think just enjoy the drive. You know, we live in a beautiful place. Enjoy it and take it in and um, just slow down a little bit. Yeah. So how do you guys prioritize, like, say it's, um, you know, non-winter. Now we, we have springtime. We have a damage to the road, potholes and things like that. How do you guys prioritize kind of the repair work and, you know, kind of maintenance after the winter time? Potholes uh, in the county, we try to fill those within 24 hours of, of being made aware of it. Um, luckily, Once it's reported or yeah. spotted or observed. Kind of yeah, thing. we like to get those things filled in a hurry because really they hold water. If they don't get filled in a hurry, they tend to get larger. Um, there's several products out there. You know, hot mix asphalt is the best product. That's You fill it with hot mix asphalt and it turns into blacktop, right? Nice. Um, the challenge is around here you can't get that stuff in the wintertime. Uh, so we use another product called uh, Cold Patch, as the name implies. You put it out when it's cold. It just doesn't hold together. You know, you're probably going to replace that pothole two or three times in the springtime, whereas a good hot mix asphalt would fill it for a year or two. Right. Uh, so that's our challenge a little bit, you know, where we live. And uh, it gets cold and it gets warm, and we have a lot of change in temperatures, a lot of traffic, speed, all those things. Um, but, yeah, we want to get those things filled right away. Um, guardrail damages, those kind of things, we try to fix those early on. Same thing, our contractor maybe doesn't get here till early spring or summer because in the wintertime it's pretty hard to put posts in the ground around here. So, yeah. So, does it go more by the extent of the damage or the type of damage or by the popularity of the road or it's kind of all the above? Yes. 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 It's all, <laughs> Check D, all the above. All of the above, <laughs> you know. Um, we, have, we do traffic counts on all of our roads, so we have a pretty good estimate of what roads are used heavily. Anecdotally, I think you and I could probably guess those as well. Right. Um, you know, like Maroon Creek Road is, is pretty popular, at least up to Highlands. Yeah. Brush Creek Road this time of year is probably pretty busy. Owl yeah. Creek Road, you know. Yeah. McLean Flats. Um, so a little bit of both, you know, but the severity too. If, if that thing, even if there's only one car that drives that thing in the hole, you know, it's a giant hole. We're going to get to that thing sooner than later because it's just. It's not pleasant to drive on and going to cause damage, you know. You don't want it to become a fishing pond right. know, after a while. They get so big. <laughs> yeah, we try to prevent that. Totally. So as we kind of close the last minute of the show, Scott, kind of, um, you know, goals, you know, for, I guess, work goals in the year ahead. you have some things in mind that you're working on? No, not particular. <laughs> I mean, <about> personally. <laughs> no, you know, let's stick, to, let's stick with professionally, dirt road maintenance. You know, we have a crew that really, really takes... Really, like Lincoln Creek Road. Yeah. Those roads, you know. Yeah, all those dirt roads. Our guy, our crew has a, gr a lot of passion in, in uh, plowing those roads in the wintertime, which unfortunately makes them fall apart in the summertime. Yeah. So we go back and, and regrade those dirt roads, uh, East Soper's Creek Road, um, Snowmass Creek Road, uh, get them all bladed up and smooth. And I love... So our, our biking community on their road bikes, rides our dirt roads. Yeah. And so our crew has a lot of pride in seeing those pictures. And, and those... 
thumbs up from bike riders. So I love it. I look forward to that. You know, our summers getting back to where we were last year. We appreciate you know that's we all like that part of the job. I love that. And actually, you guys do an awesome job on the dirt because I've now started gravel riding with clients the last several years. And we love riding out by Old Snowmass into up and over the divide into Snowmass and all that. And uh, so thanks for that, too. That's a great that's trending now. You know, gravel riding is getting big. So you guys accommodate that, you know, kind of cycling. And we take and we take pride in it. Our, our guys are like, look, they're riding our dirt roads. This is cool. Right. Well, I'm gonna send you a picture next time, okay? Cool. But for now, Scott, um, we're out of time. But did you have a good time on the local show today? Great time. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for joining yeah. us, man. I baked yeah. you some cookies. Got awesome. a couple parting gifts for you. Cool. That's great. Um, yeah. Scott Matthijs, thank you so much yeah. for joining us. We'll have you back on the show at some point. That sounds great. And thank you, Luna. You were a little bit of a rowdy little co-host today. <laughs> But we love you, girl. And thank you guys above all for watching this week on The Local Show.